we're in the midst of an era that uh, has been going on for roughly 60 years. And it's very easy to try and say, we've done something great, we've done something important, and I think history will judge us as such. But I think the real change, the real things of importance, will be judged in 50, 100, 200 years from now. There's a great line about uh, Zhou Enlai, the former uh, foreign minister of China, who was once asked, what's the importance of the French Revolution? And he was asked this in the 70s, uh, you know, some 200 years after the French Revolution. And he said, it's too soon to tell. And I think that's probably what's true about the computer revolution. It's going to have changed the world, but the question is how? It's too soon to tell. The, the, the essays do do a fair amount of looking back. They start in my father's era, who joined UNIVAC in the late 1950s, and go through mine, which is now my active computer career is behind me, and even the active computer career of my students is behind me. Yet what I'm looking at is less the technology, which has changed so very rapidly, than at the people, at the timeless way in which they encounter something new. My father encountered a technology that was largely unknown to the world in the 50s. And for him, it was very new, and he behaved in certain ways. I am the humbly claim that I'm the world's se oldest second generation computer brat. And because of that, I knew something about computers when I encountered them. My father started teaching me how to program when I was quite young. And yet, I behaved in certain ways towards that technology, towards the community that supported it, and towards the wider world. The students that I taught, the people that I discuss in the later essays, uh, they had many years to know that it existed. And many of the software, much of the software and much of the hardware was well known when they encountered it. Yet they behaved in certain universal ways of approaching it with confidence or trepidation, trying to make it their own, trying to put their own mark on it, and trying to take something from it that they could give back to the world. That's the universal part. That's the timeless part that I'm trying to encounter. The issue of a romantic hero, of someone who breaks the bounds of society to achieve a goal, is a very powerful one in our lives. And there have been times that computing has embraced that sense of romance, that sense of, I am doing something my neighbors don't understand. I'm doing something my boss doesn't understand. I'm doing something my coworkers can't do. It has driven people to make great contributions to this field. And the characters that I focused on in several points of this book have taken that sense of romance and made it their own in technology, and I think ultimately done it not only for themselves, but also to give something back. This technology was born out of World War II. The people who did it were largely the people who didn't go to war, who came of age just at the very end of it. These are people who could remember the Great Depression, who could remember the horrors of the war, who lost brothers or cousins in, in the conflict and saw in the computer the one good thing of the war, the one good piece of technology that might improve life, that might make business cycles more regular and less prone to depression, that might help people do more than they could, that might help us prevent war. And that sense of romance, that sense of idealism, is certainly incorporated in many of the characters of the book. I have a lot of favorite stories, and it's tough for me to identify one. Of my father's generation, there's no question that the favorite story is the one of 1958, which at that time he was working for UNIVAC in Dallas, Texas, and their office was almost certainly going down the tubes. It was not generating the business that they anticipated. And the question that that begs is what do technical people do when business gets bad, when they cannot see how to improve their lot? And in this case, as in so many others, is they turn to what they know. They turn to what intrigues them and hope that in doing that, something good comes out of it. In this case, the group of uh, individuals in the office decided that they would program a UNIVAC 1103, which is a massive scientific processor, to play Christmas carols. And they devoted a month to that effort. They did it very well. They got press out of it. But at the end of the day, when they were showing it off, they knew deep in their heart of hearts that they had contributed something, that it was fun, but that it probably wasn't going to improve the fortunes of their business, and that their future looked somewhat bleak. In fact, the, the individual, John Kamena, who was the lead programmer on this, knew as they were celebrating it that he was largely going to, likely going to take a data processing job elsewhere, and was looking at a new year that was quite different than the one before it. My father was a bit of a private man. 
Yet at the same time, he was an engineer. He was trained as an aeronautical engineer. And he was the head of marketing for Burroughs. And this was a time when engineers often had this role because only they could understand the computers and try to explain it. So he was very good and very used to getting up in front of people and explaining what was the computer, what were the benefits of the computer, what this technology would do for a company. And there are a series of standard speeches he gave. In many of those speeches, he had a story that he told about me, about how at some point in my life I was not doing well in school. And when they asked for a port card, I said, uh, the computer wasn't working and it hasn't come out yet. And in fact, I'd had a very difficult time. And a few phone calls found that and embarrassed me later. I don't think this has the parallel embarrassment about him. I don't think I'm telling stories on him. I think he would correct me on several issues and say, I probably don't remember it that way, but that's his prerogative. But at the same time, he was very proud of his industry. He was very proud to think it was doing good, and in particular, the economic impact of it, the fact that it was creating a new type of skilled worker, that it was simplifying how businesses worked, that it was increasing the scope of business was something that he was very pleased with. And I think he would be grateful to see that that was one of the main themes of the book. One of the important things in this book for me was to have, if you will, to, to do honor to these people's lives, to write a beautiful book. Now, not all these people are nice and not all of them come across perfectly well. But at the same time, I wanted to express what they had done in language and in stories and in insights that would appreciate them, even if they were jerks. And so the book, to me, it's very important that the book try to achieve that kind of aesthetic goal. And I'm very pleased with how it's come out, and I can only hope that the readership of it, readership of it is equally pleased.